I think what's missing for most people is that if they say what their goals are, then they become real, um, which seems silly, but is part of the problem. And I think that a lot of people are sort of lost and they're stuck and they don't know what to do, whether they are working for someone else or they're working for themselves or they're, you know, have, perf you know, personal things that they're not quite sure about, or they have professional things, or they have business things. And I think a lot of people are just sort of reacting to life and living in this, this space of, of unknowing. And that is one way to live life. You can totally live life like a pinball where you just ding from thing to thing. And lots of people do that. Uh, this, but like I said, the studies show that doesn't necessarily make you happy. What I think the real problem is, is fear. So there's fear, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of our own power that we're actually better than, than we want to believe. Um, I see this a lot with women. Uh, fear of not knowing what to do, not thinking you have the skills, that not thinking you have all the right equipment, you know, fear of change, fear of starting something, fear. So if you have a goal and you name it, then you actually have to sort of make it happen, right? It has to manifest. If you just ping around through life, then you never have to really accomplish anything. You can just sort of go through the day to day and you can, you know, do the things at your job that you may not like. You can do things in your business that you may or may not like, but you don't actually have any goals. Uh, that's, that, that is what happens. And it's because you're afraid and it's okay, totally okay to be afraid. We're all afraid of things. We're afraid of our own, you know, getting real with our own finances. We're fear, afraid of looking at our, you know, business and personal relationships. There's lots of stuff that we're afraid of. But you have to release it to start something new. You have to get over that space. So I just recently read an article um, about a woman who, I don't know, she wanted to do something small. It wasn't any big deal, really. To all of us, we would sort of be like, well, just do that. It's, it's not that big a deal. But to her, she was really afraid of it. It was something simple like, you know, traveling cross country. And, but she just was afraid, afraid. She was afraid to, to take the necessary steps, you know, save the money, make the plans, you know, get the car, whatever it was. And she finally had this like moment in the middle of like New York traffic on her way to work was like, wait a minute, it's not going to kill me. I'll just do it. And, and that sort of revelation of like, most of the things that you're really afraid of really are just made up in your head makes a big difference. What this is, what I'm going to show you are the steps you can take to figuring out what your goal is, how to keep it present, and how to get it um, to happen. Like, what are the steps? So it's great if you've decided to work through your fear. Yay. Um, but now you need the next step is like, what do I do with that? So like I said, happier people make goals. They don't always reach them. I should be very clear about that. You don't always succeed, and that is okay. That doesn't make you unhappy necessarily. What makes you unhappy is that floating through life. So even though you may set a goal that you have to go back to and figure out again, that is totally okay. Know that not all goals are reached at the first time. I mean, if you think about it in a sports metaphor, which I really shouldn't, I am... Um, completely inept when it comes to sports anything. Um, but get it, they are all trying to reach a goal, right? You know, think about soccer, they're just trying to run down the field and get the little ball in the net. And they don't always reach it. But it doesn't mean that they just quit. They just keep going and they try again and again and again. So there isn't failure in the attempt, or that they didn't make it, it would be failure if they quit. It's a big difference. Yes, and in sports, I realize there's winners and losers, which is a whole other subject. So here is the, the trick. And I have a free printable of this that I will send to all of the attendees. Um, 
when you get the, the copy of this presentation. You'll also get this printable and then another printable. <clears throat> so you don't need it though. You can just use an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. This is the important part. Name your goal. Write it at the top of the piece of paper. So let's say your goal professionally is to uh, hire three new employees or to uh, gain five new clients or maybe it's to, um, maybe if you're a freelance writer, maybe it's to, uh, to reach, uh, to have yourself published in a, in a print publication. Maybe that's a goal, you know, what, whatever it is for you. Um, it, it, it isn't for us to judge what someone else's goals are. They're all worthwhile. Um, everybody's on a, at a different place and, and we shouldn't be looking at someone else's goals and thinking, wow, I, I didn't even think of doing that. I'm still over here. That's not what this is about. What this is about is for yourself <coughs> deciding what the stretch is. What's the thing that you most want to do that will move you forward? What is the thing that you think would be be hard to get, a little bit hard to get, because if it's easy, it's not really a goal, it's just the next thing you're gonna do. So, so if something's a little bit difficult, something you see a little bit down the horizon, and something that you know you have to stretch for. So write that at the top of your piece of paper. You know, this takes about 20 minutes, this whole process, but but it will change everything if you if you follow it. So so you write your goal, you write what that what that is. And then you write, the next section is to write three things that you can do in the next 90 days to move you cl closer to your goal. See, that's why it's not something that you would do anyway or that you were going to do tomorrow. That's not a goal. That's just an action. Uh, it's something that stretches you. It's something that stretches you personally, professionally, business-wise. It's it's a stretch goal. So I taught, I teach this as a as a webinar much more in depth with a lot more pieces um, and a lot more tools that you can use. And one of the participants in that webinar had a goal of showing her work in a pretty coveted show. She's an artist and she really wanted to, to make enough, be accepted, create the plan and have her stuff showed at this regional show that she had been turned down from previously. So that was her goal. Uh, and it was a, it was a 90 day thing that she was going to try to do, try to make this happen. And she did, she was tremendously successful. I would get pictures of her working on her, you know, on her plan and on her action steps and all the things she needed to do. And this was the first part of it. She named it. And then she wrote the three things that she could do in the next 90 days. Now these things have to be things you can actually accomplish. So if you have a goal of doubling your income, you're not going to just say, well, I'm going to, you know, auto, uh, somehow I'm just going to automatically get six more clients. It just doesn't work that way. Have these be tangible, real actions that you could take in the next 90 days. Now, they might have, um, they might be a little hard, you know, stretch you a little bit, but they're not things that you can't possibly do. Next, you write, who are the three people? or organizations you can connect with to move forward with your goal. It might be working with a coach or uh, uh, someone, a business consultant. It might be contacting SCORE or your, um, you know, the, the universities have, have technology departments that might be able to have services that can help you. It might be joining a um, speakers organization, Toastmasters. It might be that you, um, you know, there's three people who you really admire who are doing work that you want to do and you're going to reach out to them sort of for a mentorship or to ask some questions. So think about that. Think about the three people or organizations that you could connect with. We're not um, ships on the sea by ourselves. We're all here to connect and you'd be surprised how flattered people are that you connect with them and how willing people are usually to help. Now, granted, 
uh, I will say a caveat and a warning. Don't ask a consultant for, to go out with coffee for you and ask them a myriad of questions and never intend to hire them. That's not going to be a successful uh, relationship for you. Um, definitely ask a consultant out for coffee to see if that's someone that you want to work with. But but don't. It, it's like you wouldn't ask the dentist uh, at a party to look at your teeth. Uh, so so just a, a note there that use people in the way that they are that they are used to being used so if they're actually being paid for their services then you need to pay them for their services so the next is what can you do today to move your goal forward now that question is the question that you ask every day what can you do today to move your goal forward? Now, you'll see that I asked you to write one goal. Now, I know that people get really excited, like kids at a buffet, and they want to have all the things, right? They want to have pie and cake and pudding and, you know, whatever it else, else it is that happens at the buffet line. And, and then they get back to the table, and their eyes were much bigger than their appetite. It's the same with goal setting. So I have been in workshops where people are saying, write down all your goals, just like make it all happen. And the truth is, is that we're pretty singular creatures. We have a lot going on. We have families, we have relationships, we have work. We, if we have a side gig that we're trying to get started, there's that. We can't actually have 25 different goals happening. What you will be most successful at is having one goal that you're working on and that you accomplish. And then you can go on to the next one. Yes, you can have personal goals and professional goals. So yes, one for your personal life and one for your professional life. But having 10 in each, each area just isn't feasible because you can't keep it as top of mind. You can't keep it in your mind's eye. So it's important to to remember that you're working on this one goal. So you're writing down what you can do today, and then every day you're writing, what can you do today to move your goal forward? So let's use the example of the artist that wanted to have her show. So she knew she had to create X amount of product. She needed to borrow a camera so that she could take photographs. She needed to photograph her work. She needed to take a small mini workshop on lighting to figure out how to do the lighting to photograph her work. These were all steps in the process. So that's what you're working towards. And some things, some tasks, so this is a task towards your goal. Some of these actions will take multiple days. So it is okay to write the same thing. I'm still working on, you know, learning about, you know, code, you know, whatever it is that it is that you're trying to do. You know, it's okay to have that reach multiple times, but every day you remind yourself, what is it that I'm doing today to move toward my goal? How will you reward yourself along the way of reaching your goal? So I know that people get defeated because goals take a really long time. If you've looked on the horizon at something you really want and you decided that you were going to get there, but it wasn't an overnight thing, we get distracted, we get disappointed, and we feel like we aren't going anywhere. So it's important to create milestones that you allow yourself to reward yourself. So it might be, so you've written down these three big things, right? At the very beginning, you wrote down these three big things that you would do to move closer to your goal. Maybe after you accomplished each of those, you treat yourself to something special. And it can be as simple as coffee out with a friend or as extravagant as a weekend getaway. You know, whatever it is that works for you, whatever will truly feel like a reward. And remind yourself, the reason I'm getting to do this is because I did X, Y, and Z. I think that we rush through life and we forget about where we're going and what we're doing, that, that we just, oh yeah, I went to go have coffee. So in your, in your reward program to yourself, you, you mark, this is what I did and this is why I got to do that. 
So my background is in incentive marketing. I worked for uh, a really a huge marketing firm and our job was to incentivize, which I know is not really a word, but incentivize salespeople to reach their sales um, quotas or their stretch goals usually. And they got rewards, big rewards, trips to Bali, um, you know, all sorts of amazing things, private concerts with Elton John. I mean, these are crazy, great rewards. But, but the companies understood that if they wanted to help people reach their goals, they needed to reward them. And then we rewarded them along the way as they were getting closer to their goal. And it's the same with you. You, you may not be able to have a private concert with um, Elton John, but you could pick up a CD or buy some music on iTunes or whatever it is that, that would make you happy. Um, and knowing that it's because you've reached your goal. The next is, how will I stay accountable? So part of the, the issue that people have is they privately, they write these goals and they do this plan, but they don't actually have a way of staying accountable. So I have a, I have a free Facebook group called the 30 day challenge, and you're welcome to join that if you're, if you're interested, uh, you can just tell a friend. You could tell a coworker, you could tell your business partner, you could tell your husband, you know, whatever it is that will help you stay accountable. One simple way is to take a calendar and make an X on each day that you do something that works towards your goal. Uh, that's a very visual reminder that you are working towards something as opposed to just floating off in space. This accountability, and that's a, actually the Seinfeld thing, by the way, it's a don't break the chain, that's his, his idea. Of course, he's gonna meditate every day, he's a transcendental meditation person. Anyway, he's gonna meditate every day because every day he puts the X on the calendar and if he didn't put the X, it would break the chain and he must be a little OCD, but, that's okay. You can use that tool to keep you focused and have a visual reminder. Um, in the accountability group that I run, you know, people are are supportive and they they sort of watch out for each other that they're slipping or they're not really staying on track. And it's uh, help people take on small challenges and big challenges and and you name it. But but having a way that you're going to stay accountable with yourself because it's really easy. You know, I'm a mom, um, and uh, uh, I know that family always comes first, and you can get lost in the um, your goals or your ideas or your plans, can get lost in the busyness of family and obligations and work. And so this piece, this keeping staying accountable, is an important part of this. Have a plan. Have a plan to do this. So how do you stay focused? I get this probably more than anything when I'm talking about goals with people. How do they, so they do the sheet and then the sheet ends up in a, you know, filing cabinet or in a pile on their desk and they don't actually keep it front of mind. So how do you actually stay focused? So here's the thing that I do, and I, I'm going to say this, this is, this is not necessarily part of a goal process, but it's just in general, use a timer. So get yourself, go online, buy yourself a very cool retro kitchen timer. Uh, there are lots and they're awesome. And put it on your desk. And when you're working, set it for 15 minute increments. So let's say you're writing, a, you know, a, uh, press release, set it for 15 minutes, see where you are at the end of the 15 minutes <coughs> and, and, and then keep and set it again. So you don't get distracted. This is especially important for those of us who do social media work as part of our job. It is very easy to Post your posts, do your thing, share your this, and then three hours later, you're wondering what you were, what you accomplished. So, just as a productivity tip, and to stay focused, use a timer in your everyday work. 
I know it sounds somewhat archaic, and yes, you could use your phone, but really the tick, tick, tick of a kitchen timer is a very strong tool to staying focused. Write down your tasks. So I keep a pretty detailed planner, paper planner, I also keep it online, but I keep a paper planner because I have a lot of changes throughout the day. And I, I write down the tasks I need to accomplish as appointments to myself. The reason I do this is because I work from home and I could float throughout my day and not really accomplish anything, look up and see that it's 4.30 and realize, oh my gosh, I have got a lot of stuff I actually have to do. And, and that isn't a very positive way of working. And so I have found over the years that if I just write what needs to be done that day as true appointments, you know, I have to write a letter of recommendation, I need to post X, Y, and Z, I need to write two articles, and I need to book travel. If I make sure that those things are on the calendar as appointments, it it makes it happen at the very least. And on my website, I have a to do sheet that I use that I clip that I put to a clipboard, fill it out every day. I write down my tasks. I write down, you know, where I need to go, who I need to connect with. I just sort of keep that at my desk all day. It's on a clipboard so I can take it with me to meetings. I just sort of have that with me. If you think that you are one of those people that can keep it all in your head, you can't. Well, you can, but you probably don't sleep well. You don't listen well. The studies show that you, you tend to not be able to listen. And I've been there. I used to think I could keep it all in my head until I realized I was driving myself insane. And so I just write it down and I can let it go. Keep your goal present and in view. So you wrote it on this piece of paper, and that's groovy. I think that's great. I'm so glad you did it. But now I want you to write it at the top of your planner page every day <coughs> or weekly if you have a weekly planner. I want you to write it on a post-it note that you place on your laptop or on your um uh, you know, in your car. I want the goal that you've created for yourself to be present and in view every day, every single day. So if your goal is to run a 5k, let's say it's a personal goal, your goal is to run a 5k. I need you to see that every single day. You know, maybe you put that on your dresser where you're running shoes, you know, where you're, um, you know, sweatpants or whatever are. Maybe you put it on your medicine cabinet, whatever it is that you need. The problem with most people is they write the goal and they never look at it again. So the tip that you can take away from and move ahead faster than anyone else is really to keep it present. I work with a group of realtors and I just gave this presentation and they sort of glazed over when I was talking about goals. And when I asked them what their goals were, you know, they were like, well, I don't, I don't really remember. And I thought, this is the, the problem. You're not keeping it present. You know, make it your screensaver, make it your desktop, make it your wallpaper on your phone, whatever it means to you that you see it on an everyday basis. Again, stay accountable. I can't say this enough. Um, I see people realize that they didn't get anywhere and it's because they didn't have anyone else either cheering them on or making sure that they are reaching their goal. It's okay to have a little tough love in your relationships where people go, so are you, are you, are you doing it? That piece of it, that real relationship where you're accountable to yourself and someone it knows can make the difference of whether you make your goal or not. The other piece of this is to track your progress. So 
For those of us that do work at home, or even those that work in offices, so I worked in the corporate world for years, so I'm not, uh, I'm not a stranger to what that looks like. For those of you that are wondering what you did at the end of the day, I have a worksheet, and I will, um, I will uh, have it, have it so that you can download it. I'll email it out. I have a way to track your progress every day. It's just a quick accountability. <clears throat> if you don't know that you're moving forward, if you don't know that you're making any progress on the goal that you set, you really aren't going anywhere. So it's a little bit like treading water. So at the end of the day, you just sort of make sure that you did you track what you were doing. Now, I have people do that for what they're doing every day anyway. Track your progress in all things. Know, know what you're accomplishing. It's like having a bank account but never looking at it and you think you might have money in there but you're not exactly sure how much. Well, you can't be very accountable to your finances if you're not aware of where your money is going and where it's being spent and how much money you have. So it's the same way. It's the same thing. You need to track your progress. I ask that people have formal reviews. Daily, you write down what you did. Weekly, you can look at the whole piece of it because you've been writing it down so you can see if you're making any progress or not. Monthly, do a reflection. So I teach this in the larger class and when I work one-on-one -on -one with clients. There's a reflection process that you can take. Um, for your monthly, for your monthly uh, um, overview of what you accomplished, quarterly and then of course yearly, I think we rush through life and we don't take the ten minutes it might take to do a review of where we're going, where we were, and where we want to go. And so that building in that time for yourself makes a huge difference as to whether you're moving anywhere. So daily, you're writing, you're tracking your progress. Weekly, you're looking at what you tracked. And then monthly, quarterly, and yearly, you're asking yourself some harder questions about are you going where you want to go? And have you reached what you want to reach? And where do you want to go next? So every day, you write what you did to move forward on your goal every single day. So you can keep a Word document of that. You know, if you're a blogger, you could have that as the bottom piece of your blog every day. If you're, uh, you know, you can just write it in your planner or on your calendar, you know, whatever it is, you can track it however you want. But every single day, you write what you did to move forward on your goal. If you can see the pattern here, if you can see what I'm saying, it's that you are professing what it is, you are staying accountable with yourself and possibly with others, and you're tracking your progress. That's the real secret. This is, this is what will make you go from pinging through life to actually making positive change happen in your life. So the power of the post-it note. So I am a big lover of post-it notes and I actually have the really great app that you can look at. You can scan your post-it notes to editable text now, which is kind of fun. But the power of the post-it note has two, two functions here. And this is also a time management thing and, and a goal strategy. So use the post-it note to write what your goal is. You might, you might write what your big three things that you're going to do to accomplish your goal in the next 90 days. You might write that. Those three things might go on a post-it note. The real power of a post-it note, though, has to do with your to-dos. I know that people have a million things that they think they can cram into their day. I've worked with uh, corporate clients and entrepreneurs and professionals of all walks of life and they all think they can do everything they can jam it all in the truth of it is and I really feel like I should do some sort of formal study people accomplish three big things every day that's what they're really capable of they can write that 
that good, that one really good article. They can make that phone call that's a little hard and they can attend that meeting. Yes, you may have other things you're doing. You're cooking dinner, you're doing your laundry, you know, all the, the maintenance things that are happening. But the three big things that you can do are three. And three things fit on a post-it note. So I have hundreds of post-it notes. Uh, those of us who've worked in the corporate world know that post-it notes are everywhere. And so I have hundreds of them. And I have always have a stack on my desk. And I write what those three things are that I want to accomplish this, that day. And I slam it into my planner. And I make sure that those things are scheduled and I cross them off. And I know it seems like extra writing or it seems like an extra thing. But the truth of it is, is that once you reach, that's also for tracking, then you've already tracked it, right? You already have your things that you did. If one of those is goal oriented and two are work related or whatever it is that you have, then you will have accomplished a one thing that was working towards your goal and then two other things that move you forward in life. And if you accomplish those three things, it's powerful. If you do that for a week, you will feel like you have done something. Um, I have a lot of uh, associates who really feel like they're floating. And when I ask them as a challenge to do this post-it note process, <coughs> every single one of them reported back that they saw their life that week was more focused and had more accomplished than, than weeks previously. It may not be true. They may have done a lot of things those other weeks, but they don't remember it. They have no idea how it felt and they didn't track it in any way. So I feel like I should be a spokesperson for post-it notes because I'm like evangelical about this. So grab yourself some, doesn't matter if they're brightly colored or if they're the pale yellow, um, you know, original post-it note. Write your three things. And if one of them isn't goal oriented, you'll start to track that as well, that you really aren't working on your goal. And you can write it, slap it in your planner or on your computer or however you do that. And eventually you, the used ones will go in a stack and you'll be able to lay those out on your desk and see what you have accomplished. And no, it might sound silly, but it works. So, I know that this is a brief inter, you know, um, look at goal setting. It's sort of the, the top level. I did give you the process uh, to set your goals and I'll send that out in a worksheet. I have upcoming goal setting VIP days coming where you will create your goal plan in one day. These are one-on-one -on -one sessions. And if you're curious about that and what that looks like, how that would look like to work with me, I'm happy to uh, connect with you. <coughs> I'm also, we'll have an upcoming webinar. It's a three week, three session webinar that goes in much more uh, in depth on goal setting and conversion and, and how you um, attack your life basically to get where you want to go. And if you're curious about that, you can email me. And I wanted to thank Constant Contact. I can't do this without them. And so if you're interested in email marketing, I should tell you that I, I am easily booking up to you know 50 to 100 people in webinars. And so uh, if you're interested in doing that and learning how to to gain clients and how to build the list and all of those things, you know, here is a way to do that. I, I hope that you'll go forward and you will look at this process in your life and see what you can do to, to make the next step. Uh, we are here to accomplish great things and you have great gifts and I really hope that you use them uh, and move forward. 
And thanks again for being here. You'll be sent this along with the two worksheets. And I look forward to having you on the next webinar. And if you're curious about what's next or if you're looking for something specific, I know someone's interested in time management. I'm going to do one on that. Um, anything that you're interested in, just email me the topic and I probably have a, a webinar and I can schedule one. And what you're interested in, other people are interested in. Thanks again. I appreciate your time.